Learning a foreign language as you sit in a classroom can be boring and difficult. Having this learning experience in a foreign country, though, changes everything. Where you sleep, what you eat, and what you do are all part of the experience. This is a journey from Antarctica to the Arctic, where myself, with the help of willing friends, explore travel concepts. Concepts you may not learn about from a travel agency. Karen, a friend from Canada, has come down to be part of the experience of studying in a Spanish school while staying at a homestay in Quito, Ecuador. This homestay option offered by our Spanish school includes meals and is an important part of our learning experience. To ensure we get the most from it, we adopt a rule. While at home, we can only speak Spanish. The biggest benefit of a homestay for me is, well, I take class from 8.30 to 12.30 in the morning, and then if you aren't in a homestay, you tend to go off and perhaps not speak Spanish much for the rest of the day. With the homestay, we have, in this case, breakfast, lunch, and supper with the family, which tends to be you know, probably another two and a half hours, sitting around a table, speaking Spanish, making small talk, <laughs> trying to have conversation in Spanish. A good homestay. I guess meeting one's expectations in terms of being relatively comfortable, being able to, to feel a bit at home, not feeling so uncomfortable or out of place. This homestay in particular wanted us to feel like we were children of theirs. Uh, it's easy to say that. It's a bit more of a challenge to get into that groove, especially I think if you're only there for a week. It's hard to, you know, as an adult, figure out how to integrate into a family's life and and feel comfortable with that. A homestay also offers an opportunity for the host to get to know other parts of the world without leaving their home. We have the opportunity to know the world, as I said, because practically they have come from all over the world. They have come from Suecos, Ingleses, Holandeses, Franceses, North Americans. To fully explore and contrast the options, I've come back a year later to study Spanish at a university in Medellin, Colombia. Here, I rent a room in a house with a mix of nationalities. Like a homestay, it is important that the spoken language in your house is the one you're trying to learn. The four different languages spoken in the house sometimes make things confusing for its inhabitants. Part of immersing yourself in a local culture is eating as they eat. (laughs) 
This doesn't always fit, though, with what you want to eat. Sometimes, traditions are actually brought with you. When Thanksgiving rolls around, a holiday not celebrated in Colombia, we decide to celebrate as all my friends and family are doing back home. Now, let's go back and check in on Karen to see how her classes are going. Most Spanish schools in Ecuador offer classes one-on-one. -on -one. I have a particular way that I need to learn when it comes to languages, so um, having a professor that can adapt. A bicycle is a great way to get around a city like Medellin. I use it to go to my Spanish classes at Universidad Pontificia Bolivariana. But first, as I do every Thursday, I will take advantage of one of the activities one can participate in while studying, a little ultimate. Not as young as I used to be. Ahora es tiempo para nadar, para refrescar, para refrescar mi cuerpo antes de mi clase. Permiso. Before we start my two-hour class, I need to eat something. The cool thing about living here is that the 100-mile diet means something completely different. Bananas are grown here, and you have these guys, Granadijas. It's all seedy and weird, and you just suck it up. It's actually really good. So what makes for a good Spanish teacher? I would suggest showing up on time, but really at the end of the day, it's more important that they know how to teach 
and are prepared when they get there. An obvious difference between my class and Karen's is the presence of other students. La atención es solo para un estudiante. En este proceso se puede se detectan más rápido los errores, las fallas y el proceso es más rápido. En la clase en grupo hay que estar más atento a los a todos los estudiantes. También es una clase más diversa. Entonces se tienen muchos puntos de vista, muchas opiniones y la clase es muy enriquecedora, ¿sí? In addition to Spanish class, one has the opportunity to sit in on other classes at Upe Bay. We are university students with access to all the student facilities. A special bonus for us is a conversation club, where myself and other students of varying levels can meet daily and practice our Spanish. Of course, someone else leads the conversation and picks the topics. Spanish schools generally offer many activities as well. You will be coming back to school and there's a football match between the teachers and the students. It is always fun showing off your sporting prowess on the international stage, or the lack thereof. In cooking class, we start with a name I will never remember. Do some normal cooking stuff. Put the food into one of Latin America's favorite things. And then, of course, we test. How is it? We didn't take any salsa lessons this time, but that generally is an integral part of any Spanish school experience. Quito and the surrounding area can keep your afternoons busy. Without leaving Quito, one can take a ride up the teleferico to get an amazing view of the city. Lost you yet? And my favorite part was the view. The view. Yeah. Yeah. You like fog. Yeah. It was consistent. All in three six degrees. Yeah. So it's, yeah, I mean, you don't, not too often you get the same view each direction. Consistent view in all directions. Yeah. It's like me in the box. In a place like Quito's historic center, you can also learn a little history. On a tour, it's always fun to try and imagine yourself back in time. It's a quite the feat, not everyone is able to do it. I'm able to struggle with it. It's a pretty thin mall. Are we sure it's right? This one is apparently checked by GPS, whereas I can't see it right now. The official monument is not that big. Which hand? Well, my left strong hand. Well, you can use That's both. all you. Hold on, ready? To show that life is different when you're on the equator, there are suggested experiments you can try. Okay. <laughs> As I learned yesterday, you can do that anywhere if you have patience. But I think that one can do it here. Ah, oh, okay. Tell me when I'm going to run into the people. Other nearby touristy options include hot springs in the mountains and the famous Altavala Market, where you can pick up a few random animals or more traditional touristy things. Upe Bay also offers opportunities to explore Medellin and Colombia, 
or you can discover them on your own. Tejo is a national pastime in Colombia. It is a lot like horseshoes or washer toss. You take a piece of metal and try to get it the closest to the target. You pay by buying and drinking beer. There's one little thing that sets this game apart. They use gunpowder. A good way to know a city in the night is to go in bicis. But it's a little dangerous in a city like Medellin, so let's try to find other friends. Medellin is a perfect city for biking. It gets wet once in a while, but uh, pretty much always you have perfect weather. I'm in a t-shirt at night. It doesn't get any colder than this, really. It doesn't get that much hotter either, so it's pretty well perfect for a city for biking. Si, ahora solo somos dos, y no tenemos mucho poder. Si somos cien personas, tenemos mucho más poder. Encontramos um, algunas personas con bicis. Esta pasa cada miércoles en Medellín. Es una ciclo, es una critical mass bike ride. Espero que no hay lluvia y vamos a mirar algunas luces que recibimos ciudad. The plan for this night was to go see the lights on the river in Medellin, but rain put a damper on filming. Myself and other members of my house get a chance to check them out a few nights later. Representa Manrique, donde la música, como pueden ver al fondo, es muy importante. Como la salsa, por ejemplo, es un género que se popularizó en Manrique. Entonces, el estilo de bailar salsa, el estilo Manrique es muy famoso. Exacto, miren, entonces por eso hay, hay música. Y arriba vemos unos vitrales porque la mayoría de iglesias y casas antiguas pues, en Manrique tenían vitrales. One difficult part about getting to know people at a deeper level as a traveler is that you eventually have to say goodbye. Not all activities you may experience while studying in a foreign country will be positive. Uh, Calvin, you said? Wow. Todo bien? Todo bien? This is a reenactment. I've actually had the pleasure of being robbed in Quito, Medellin, and Antigua, Guatemala. 
Almost every country in Latin America offers some sort of opportunity to learn Spanish. Antigua, Guatemala is one place that has taken advantage of its pretty streets and buildings, as well as its lower costs, to make Spanish schools the heart of its economy. There also are more rural options if you look hard enough. Echo Cabana near Cabán, Guatemala offers the opportunity to learn Spanish out in the countryside if you prefer a more tranquilo experience. The price you pay for your classes will depend on the country and how developed it is. Guatemala comes in at the least expensive, with one-on-one -on -one classes for only $8 per hour and a homestay that includes meals for $100 per week. Ecuador is slightly higher at 9 and $140. Colombia, at a university such as Upe Bay, is much more expensive at $24 and $475. You can do as I did though and take group classes for $9 per hour and rent a room in a house. Studying a language is always easier if you're studying it in a language or in a country where they speak that language. It's quite difficult to motivate yourself to study Spanish in Canada, but coming to Ecuador makes a lot of sense. You can use it outside of your morning classes and um, you get more from it and immerse yourself a bit in the culture while you do it. If you decide to have a foreign language experience, what you do outside the classroom will be up to you. Yeah.